my gosh, you guys, today I feel about as good as I look. Look at how tired I am. I threw my neck out last night at, when I was sleeping because that's what happens when you get older. Just in your sleep, you can throw out your muscles and bones and all the things. I'm using my microphone because I'm going to go into my garage in a minute and check on my new vibratory tumbler and it is so freaking loud. You will never be able to hear me unless I have this microphone right up at my mouth. But first, I'm grabbing a couple of things so that I can eat my lunch because I am a hungry little lady today, y'all. Oh! Are we out of paper towels? What a tragedy. But we're not out of mini Coca-Colas, which is my favorite thing in the whole world. Anyway, I'm super stressed out today. I have so much work to do, but I can barely move my head because my neck hurts so freaking bad. Eric and I need to podcast today. I'm way behind on my editing. I am just a hot mess express. However, I'm importing a little bit of footage right now, and so I have a minute to go check on my rocks because with this vibratory tumbler that I got, I have to check on it every 12 hours. Like, you have to baby it. It's kind of fun, but also kind of ridiculous. Okay, it is so loud in here. Hmm, it's looking good good but it also doesn't look right hold on oh no this is not good I don't know if you can even hear me it is so loud in here but this is what it's looking like right now and the slurry is supposed to be thicker than that I think so I think I did something wrong here but there's definitely a learning curve to this thing I just have to figure it out I've been watching tons of tutorials on it and I've been trying out different things just trying to figure it out and make sure it works but we'll see I think tomorrow I can take these out and we'll see if it worked but it's so freaking loud but it is also very fun to try to figure out how this thing works anyway typically when I'm tumbling my rocks. I use a tumbler like this and it just rolls the rocks around for weeks and weeks and months and months and months. But with this vibratory tumbler, it jiggles and shakes and vibrates the rocks and they can get polished within like a week, which is way shorter than months and months and months. So I really hope it works and I can figure it out. Fun stuff. Now it's time to go back to work. I am stress.com, you guys. I have so much to do today. So I'm glad it's a Tortilla Talk Tuesday, um, but that means not much editing is gonna happen today. And it's mostly just gonna be the most boring. And it's just gonna be the most boring vlog ever of me just talking. But anyway, how's everyone doing today? Are you having a great day? I'm good, I'm so glad. Honestly, all I want to do today is go to the beach and look at rocks. That's literally the only thing I wanna do. And that happens when I get really overwhelmed and stressed out because I kind of trained myself last year that whenever I was having a really, really bad day, feeling really depressed, that's when I would go to the beach and find like serenity and peace and happiness in just being in nature and looking at rocks. So the fact that I'm feeling really overwhelmed and stressed and anxious today like oh my god all I want to do is go to the beach and look at rocks I'm literally sh this is a real shake this is not me trying to shake you guys have probably noticed just in general when I'm showing you things like my rocks or just whatever you'll notice that I'm a pretty shaky person I'm kind of always a little bit anxious but like this is it's like really bad today I feel so anxious and for what for what for no reason okay i'm gonna post this vlog and then i'm gonna go do my uh podcast so i'll see you later is this the hospital i'm the doctor macy you're the doctor macy um, you're the doctor macy and then the doctor macy doctor macy has chicken doctor macy has chicken is your you're all better i'm all better yeah Monster trash. This is my turn. Monster Eric and I just went on a date, and yes, I wore a cat sweater on a date. And now we're home and I need to do laundry, but I don't want to do laundry! And I freaking hate doing laundry so much. I hate it so much. So I'm having a pity party about it for two minutes, and then I'm gonna go do the laundry. <sighs> laundry is, it, it's not like you just like put the laundry in and then it's like, then you did your laundry. Like, the fact that there are so many steps to laundry is what makes me hate it so much. Like first I have to collect all the laundry from throughout the house because it's everywhere because my kids will just randomly just like take clothes off and so will I apparently. So there's clothes in the living room and in the bathrooms and in the kitchen sometimes. There's clothes everywhere. So I have to collect it throughout the house and then I have to separate it. And no, I don't separate like colors and cold washes with warm washes. It all goes in the same thing. If it gets destroyed, then it wasn't worth having anyway. But I do separate all the loads. So I do the twins as a load. I do Flynn's clothes as a load. And then I do all the kids pajamas as a load, and then I do my clothes as a load, Eric's clothes are a separate load, and towels are a separate load, and the kids' blankies and sheets are a separate load. That's a lot of freaking loads. So I have to find all the clothes throughout the house, then I have to separate all the clothes, and then to try to make my life easier when I need to fold the clothes, because I hate folding clothes, I try to make sure all the clothes are the right side out, you know what I mean? So if I find a shirt on the ground like this, I'll make sure that I turn
turn it the right side out so that when it comes out of the wash, I don't have to worry about that. It's just one step of just like quickly folding to then put away. So to find all the clothes, I have to separate all the clothes in the different loads. Then I have to make sure none of the clothes are inside out. Then I have to wash all the clothes and dry all the clothes and then fold all the clothes, then put all the clothes away. Laundry is a full time job when you're a family of five. I swear to God. How do people keep up with laundry? Does anyone on this earth enjoy doing laundry? I hate it so much. I hate it so much. So. <clears throat> Time to do some laundry. I'll see you guys later. Hello, welcome to Tortilla Talk with me and creepy Miranda staring at us in the background. I'm going through some polished rocks that need to be organized so I can put them where they go. It's time to answer your Tortilla Talk questions. I love doing Tortilla Talk, so thanks for all your great questions, and let's get started. I know I always say that Tortilla Talks are like not very edited, but this one's gonna be like really not edited. <laughs> I feel like usually I like will cut out any sort of like breath or pause, or um, anytime I say um, things like that, I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna try my hardest to not edit very much tonight. So, and welcome to the most awkward tortilla talk ever because it's just gonna be a lot of weird breaths and pauses. I don't think anyone cares, but I'm saying that anyway. Okay, here we go. Let's get started. Tori asked, Tortilla Talk, would you ever be down into questioning Flynn about his uh, favorite, what is his favorite thing to do? What is his dream job? What his favorite animal is? Things like that. Love you so much. I think you mean like in the vlog, maybe. When I screenshotted this question, I just thought you meant in general, but now I'm realizing you probably meant like, can I ask him on camera? But I'm just going to tell you because I actually do ask the kids questions like this all the time every day. So I know the answers to these questions. But if you were to ask Flynn, what's his favorite thing to do? He would say play with cars, play with trucks. That's what he would say. But as his mother who observes him and watches his life, I think his favorite thing to do is to be one-on-one -on -one with um, either me or Eric and just talking and like going on an adventure, whether that means going to the park or the playground or the beach or going to the store, getting ice cream, like that's his favorite thing to do. And then the question, what is his dream job? I asked him this the other day, I think a couple days ago, I was like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, like, what do you want your job to be? You know how mommy's job is I film videos and I used to do singing and I used to do Miranda stuff, that was my job. But people have different jobs all over the world. You can be someone who works with animals and be a vet. You could be a a fireman, you could be a truck driver, you could be a librarian, you could be a doctor, you could be an artist, you can be someone who just looks at bugs all day. You can do anything you want. What do you want to be when you grow up? And he got like sad and he was like, I don't want to be anything. I just want to be Flynn. I just want to be me. And I was like, no, you will be you. I'm still me. I'm still mommy. And I also work. Everyone like has a job. So what job do you want to have? He's like, nothing. I don't want a job. I just want to be Flynn. So I think he thinks that like a job is an identity. But in the past, he's told me he's wanted to be someone who takes care of bugs. He's told me he wanted to be a truck driver, a trash truck driver. He's wanted to be someone who just plays with cars all day. So I think it's just like, you know, he's five. He doesn't know. And and he's just gonna live his life and play with his trucks and look for bugs and that's all he should be focused on right now. Starry Eyes Chick said, did you trade any friendship bracelets at the Eras Tour concert? Can you show them? Okay, this is so embarrassing you guys. I kind of didn't. I traded maybe like four bracelets. I really wasn't expecting this, but I got really nervous. Like I didn't want to like bother anyone. I didn't want to go up and talk to anyone and like make them feel awkward or uncomfortable or ruin their night or I don't know. I just felt like so weird, like going up to people and asking them to trade bracelets. But a couple people did come up to me and ask if I wanted to trade and I was like, yes, of course, take whatever you want. You can have them all. Like I just like wanted to give, cause I love making the bracelets cause I want to give them to people. So I was like, kind of like, oh no, like now, so now I have all these bracelets. Um, but I just, I don't know, maybe I'll wear them again. Hopefully I, she'll have another tour someday that I can go to and I will give them away then. But yeah, I'm disappointed in myself. I did not really trade bracelets very much. Okay. Next question. Omir said, Tortilla Talk question. I asked your last vlog, but do you not miss having your old pool? Do you think you'll put in one? Wait, do you think you'll put in a pool here? Because my yard's so big. So, oh, and that's from Lisa. So I, uh, actually get this question kind of. Often. I feel like people ask about my old pool a lot and so I thought I'd answer it but um, I don't really miss the pool and I will tell you why I have children and I um, am terrified that something will happen to my kids always because I'm a mom and I think moms just in general are always trying to 
you know, think one step ahead of how your children could hurt themselves in some way or something and try to protect them and keep them safe. And pools are just any body of water kind of in general scares me with kids because kids, you know, like adults, um, that I don't even want to say the words out loud, but things can happen in water and with children. So obviously we do everything we can as parents to make sure that they're safe. So um, Flynn has been in swim lessons for, you know, years on and off. He's in swim lessons right now. He goes weekly and the twins start swim lessons in a couple of weeks. And so, you know, we, we do everything that we can to teach them about water safety and swimming and make sure that they're never around bodies of water without us with them watching them, making sure everything is safe and good. Um, maybe someday when they're much older, we would think about wanting a pool again someday, but like, I'm not really a pool girly. Like I'm, I don't really care. I don't need a pool. I don't, I don't know. That it's not something I ever had in my whole life until I bought that house, the last house I was in. So to me, a pool is, was like, it's like the most luxurious, unnecessary, amazing cool thing that you could have in your backyard and if I knew anyone growing up that had a pool I was like oh my gosh you're like rich rich like that's like the richest thing you could have is like a pool like oh my gosh so to me it's never felt like I needed a pool or like desperately wanted a pool it was just like I don't know it was really cool when we had one and now that I have little kids I'm like I don't need it I don't need a pool I don't need any body of water near my children that was a long one to answer but yeah, I don't need a pool. I do miss the hot tub though. Oh my gosh, that hot tub was so nice. I really loved going in the hot tub at night. That was really nice. Catwoman said, Twitty Talk question, can you give an update on the Trader Joe egg chicks? I'm still so blown away that your mom hatched chicken eggs that she bought at the store. I'm still blown away by it too. I can't believe it. And I asked my mom if she had any pictures or videos that I could show you guys. And she's like, no, I don't. And they're obviously asleep now because it's dark and she doesn't want to go out and like try to find them and wake up all the chicks. They're still there, they're still fabulous, and they're white. I thought that they would be like your classic like orange chickens, like orange hens, you know? And they're white. She bought three chicks and then she hatched three chicks from Trader Joe's eggs. And if you haven't seen that, you should go watch because it's like amazing, it's very mind blowing. And there's a vlog um, recently that I did where my mom literally bought eggs at Trader Joe's and hatched them with her chicken like it was crazy um so yeah they're much bigger they're so freaking cute and they're white um which i wasn't expecting megan said have you ever gathered rocks from the creek and tumbled them so i have gathered rocks from the creek and i have not tumbled them yet because i don't have enough to tumble like to fill a tumbler but i want to make sure that when i do tumble them i keep all the creek rocks together because i want to make sure that i know which ones are creek rocks and which ones are like my beach rocks my regular stones and whatnot and some people were asking about the rocks that flynn got for me because flynn got some rocks for me and he like took them home in his socks <laughs> if you guys, i don't know if you guys remember that um but i've seen a few comments of people asking like did you ever tumble those rocks and this is between you and me. This is a secret, okay, that I need you to keep because I don't want Flynn to ever find out. I mean, not anytime soon at least. Like maybe someday I can tell him, but every single one of the rocks that he gave me, like I washed them all. They're all like sandstone, like crumbly dirt rocks. Like they're not rocks that you can tumble and then they'll polish. They're the type of rocks that like, if I put them in my tumblers, they would just disintegrate. And if they didn't disintegrate, they would never polish. I could maybe get them more round, but like, they would never get shiny, so I can't tumble them. But I kept them all, I still have all those rocks, I just can't tumble them. So I think Flynn forgot about them, which is good, because I don't want him to remember and ask me if I polished them or not, because I know he'd be sad. And then the creek rocks, there's a lot of creeks um, where I live, and I love going to the creek with the kids, but my creeks are not like creeks, I think, in the rest of the world, maybe. I don't know. But I've seen people rock hunt at creeks, and the water is, like, crystal clear, and the rocks are glistening and gorgeous. And, like, that is just not my experience. We have beautiful creeks, yes, but they're full of muck and moss and just, like, grimy sliminess. There is not a single rock I have ever found in a creek near me that is not completely covered in muck and grime and just disgusting. I'm so envious of people who can go to creeks and just have crystal clear creek water and crystal clear like stones and pebbles. Like that is not my experience. So it is kind of like my dream to tumble some creek rocks someday, but like for the time being, it doesn't seem like it's really an option for me. Jov Jovana, Jovana, I don't know, said, Tortito question, what's the inspiration behind your rock tumbling? I've answered this question a lot of times before I feel like talking about like my rock obsession how that started and why that started but I do 
get this question often these days, and so I thought I would give a little refresher. So if you've already heard this story, I'm sorry, you can fast forward a little bit, but I'll try to keep it brief. That's not something I'm talented at, but I will try. Last year I was doing this like program and I had um, some therapists and they had recommended that I try to find um, a calm, happy place that I could go to in my mind when I was, when I felt overwhelmed, which was often. And the, one of the places that I had chosen to think about is like my calm place was the beach because I used to go to the beach and look for seashells sometimes. And that always felt very relaxing to me. So I was trying to think of a place that was very relaxing and something I enjoyed doing. Um, and that was something I thought of. So that was like my calm place, but I was having a really hard time focusing on like being at the beach and imagining myself there. I was just so overwhelmed by like my negative feelings that like I couldn't I couldn't get there in my mind so um, my therapists had suggested that I go to the beach and look for seashells so we went to the beach it was high tide it was gross there was seaweed everywhere and flies and bugs there was no seashells anywhere I knew that the seashells were under the water because it was high tide I knew that they were deep in the ocean under the sand and all I had around me was seaweed and rocks and I was like I just need to be patient and let this time pass and let the tides change and eventually I will be able to get to those um, seashells again. And it just kind of felt like it was a beautiful metaphor and so I was like, oh, that's kind of lovely and I don't want this trip to the beach to be a waste so I'm just gonna look at what I have and what I have here is seaweed and rocks. So I'm just gonna look at the rocks. So I just started picking up rocks and looking at them and there was this one rock in particular that kind of just jumped out at me and it was a black rock and I just really wanted to take it home. I felt like there's something special about that rock. And so I took it home with me and I, then I looked up what that rock was. When I searched it online, it popped up that it was an Apache tier stone. And now I don't think it's an Apache tier, but at the time I thought it was an Apache tier. And at the time I needed it to be an Apache tier because I looked at the meaning and the story behind the Apache tier stone was really beautiful. The history behind it and the story behind it was beautiful. Go look it up. I'm not going to retell it here a million times, but the story behind it and what it is meant to be for like was helpful to me during that time. And so I carried around this little stone that was supposed to be for protection and strength and and um, represented women who had gone through hard times and like I just I really was drawn to that stone and that was the first rock that I ever felt like excited about and um, was grateful for and then after that whenever I would go look for rocks I started noticing like patterns and colors and cool things about these rocks that I never noticed before because I why would I ever notice a rock like it's a rock you know there's just so many lessons I feel like I learned through rocks and the idea of these stones and rocks are things that no one cares about like I can pick up a rock and find the beauty in it and then there's the whole element of like finding it and taking it home and then making it shiny and beautiful and bringing out the colors and bringing out the like translucency of a rock or um, making it shine and then looking at the meaning behind it and being inspired by like the, the meaning or the history of the stone and what that stone has meant to other people and how it has helped other people through certain situations. I don't know, there's just so many different little lessons and things that were inspiring to me and helpful and cool to me. And I also just love that it's like, not not just like oh you pick up a stone and that's cool like I love sea glass we all know that I love sea glass well I'm talking way too much but there is like the idea of like the history of a piece of glass like where did this come from who had this how old is this like that's all very fun but once you get sea glass and you bring it home then it's just here like you could make a craft with sea glass I guess you can make jewelry with sea glass and a lot of people do that I don't really have a desire to make stuff with that sea glass I love that rocks is like it's it's, it's months of work it's months of finding a stone on the beach that I think is special for some reason when no one for thousands of years has ever picked up that stone and I found something pretty in it and I'm going to take it home and for months I'm going to tumble it and 
grind it down and polish it and make it pretty and then display it in my home. And, and when I look at these rocks, I remember where, like my, I know I have a lot of rocks, but like I can look at a stone and go, oh, I remember where I was when I got that stone. And like these stones right here, I got on my trip with Eric when we drove up north, up and down the coast. And so when I look at these stones, I don't just see little green stones. I see all these special memories with Eric on the beach and like hunting for cool creeks and little rivers and things that we could go find rocks at and the conversations we had and and the the wonderful times we had together and laughing together and finding that like abandoned ship and going on it like I, I see memories when I look at these rocks and then some of them are just pretty like some of them I don't quite remember where I was when I found it but um, they're just pretty to me and like like this one okay this little one right here I don't remember where I got it it's, you know just a little red and yellow brown pretty Jasper showing my rocks to Eric the other day and he picked up this rock and he said oh my gosh this looks like a painting from one of my mom's favorite artists. His mom is an artist. And I guess she, there's this one artist that she loves and he's like, this rock looks like one of this artist's paintings. Now, every time I see this rock, I think of his mom and I think of this artwork that, um, you know, he thinks of and like, there's just like things tied. To, so it's just like, there's memories tied to it. And then on top of that, there's like meanings behind each one of these things, like these yellow quartz. Um, I don't remember where I got them, probably at a local beach. But I know that yellow quartz is like a symbol of joy and happiness, but more importantly, like it's supposed to help you with self-esteem and confidence. And when you hold it, you're supposed to like think about that and it can help you have self-esteem and confidence, blah, blah, blah. Or like this yellow jasper. I know that yellow jasper is a good like protection stone for traveling. So if you're traveling, you, you know, hold it yellow jasper with you, you know, like there's, so there's obviously sentimental reasons that I love rocks and stories and memories tied to the rocks and lessons that I've learned tied to the rocks and then also there's these like fun little like encouraging self-empowerment meanings behind each one of the stones too. It's just a fun hobby that I love that means a lot to me and obviously I could talk about this for literally years but oh, my literally my light just turned off. My light was like you've talked about this too much shut up so I'm going to stop talking about rocks now. Sorry. I love that I said I was gonna make it a long story short, like I was gonna keep it brief. Obviously I did nothing of the sort, but I love freaking rocks, okay? And there's a lot of reasons why I love rocks. I know I should move on because my light told me to move on, but also my mom likes to look for rocks and tumble rocks and it's something that helped us to bond. We would go to the beach together and we would just talk and cry and, well, I would cry, <laughs> and um, have this special mother-daughter time together. And it's something that I could do with my friends. I used to go with Christina all the time. I've taken Rachel and Abby and I take my children my children love to do it with me it's like a beautiful bonding thing Eric started looking for sea glass because of my rocks and we had the most magical wonderful memories together because of rocks and rock hunting so just stupid rocks they're literally just freaking rocks and they have like helped make my life so much better in so many ways but there's so many cool things about it anyway okay i need to move on tortilla talk question do you have any pumping tips or advice i'm due in five weeks with my second and i plan on exclusively pumping but i formula fed my first due to postpartum depression so i'm entering into a world i know nothing about oh my gosh i'm so sorry that um you had to go through postpartum depression that is the worst and i hope that you have a wonderful support system to help you through um, this upcoming wonderful journey you're about to go on of having another child. Congratulations. I breastfed Flynn for two years and then with the twins, I really wanted to breastfeed. I tried very hard for months and they just couldn't do it. They were preemies and so they were tube fed and then they were bottle fed and we did a mixture of formula and breast milk, mostly breast milk that I pumped. And then once they turned seven months old, I switched over fully to formula because the pumping was too much. So that's my experience and that is my history with pumping and with feeding babies in general. But I really um, wasn't a huge fan of pumping. I didn't like it, but I know a lot of women really like, prefer that. Like um, I once talked about how much I did not like exclusively pumping and there were comments that were like I actually exclusively pumped and I loved it so first thing I would do is recommend searching online for like communities of people in like um, you know little blog posts and whatnot of people who exclusively pump and really enjoy it because I think you should definitely feel encouraged and excited about it by um, women and people who 
it really like it and and have found joy in that that is not something i ever found joy in i really did not like pumping the only joy i got from it was knowing that like my breast milk was feeding my babies but that does not mean there's anything wrong with formula feeding your babies that's wonderful and perfect too i did that for a very long time my babies got formula for a very long time and so i think it's all great but my biggest advice other than finding a community of people who exclusively pump that you can talk to is um, to make yourself a pumping cart. So you get these little like trolley cart things and that is your pumping cart. So on my pumping cart, it was always a mess, but yours hopefully will be more organized than mine. On the top shelf was my pump and I had a couple different pumps. So I had my big pump that like was the goat, like that was the main pump I used. But then I also had a pump that was like uh, um, one that you could walk around with. So it, was, it didn't work as well, but it was like you put it in your bra. You can find wireless ones that you don't have to plug in like battery operated pumps you can walk around the house with. I really liked having both. That way I could pump when I needed to in my pumping spot and my bed. Um, but then when I was traveling or if I just wanted to be in another room or whatever, um, a long drive, uh, you know, or if I knew I wasn't going to be home all day, you have that little tiny um, portable one you can have too. So that was on the top of my little three shelf little trolley and on top I also had little milk bags that I could put the milk into. My camera's about to die, hold on. Okay, oh my gosh, my camera's dying, my light's dying, everything's just telling me to shut up. So I'm gonna finish this up quickly, but I wish I could remember everything I had on those freaking shelves, but just whatever, customize it to yourself. So I know I had snacks on one of the shelves, like because you get hungry when you are breastfeeding. I was pumping every three hours for uh, seven months and it was um, very hard to keep up with the amount of milk that I needed for the twins. And I was pumping every three hours, so lots of snacks and a water bottle, like my favorite big water bottle was already, always on there, extra water. I think in mine I had diapers and wipes because I'm pretty sure that with the twins, how I would do it is like I would feed them in um, their bottles while I was pumping. So like I would pump while they were eating. Um, because I couldn't hold them both at the same time and feed them. So we had the system where like I laid them down and like would feed them um, right in front of me on the bed and watch them while I was pumping. And so when they were done eating, I would change their diaper and then put them to bed. And so I'm pretty sure I had diapers and wipes on my little trolley. Another thing that I'm really glad that we did is we rented a high grade like fancy pants pump from the hospital because i was pumping so often with flynn i didn't need to do that i pumped when i needed to when i was you know like when i was doing broadway like i needed to pump in order for him to have milk when i was doing the show so like i just brought my little like regular pump to the theater and like whatever but with the twins since i was pumping so often and since you're exclusively pumping talk to the hospital about renting a hospital grade pump i think it was like a couple bucks a day or something to rent it but we rented it the whole time i was pumping and i'm so grateful for it because the little pumps that you can get just don't have as good of a suction power so definitely talk to your hospital about getting a hospital grade pump because that was life-saving for me it really helped get as much milk as possible out of these titsalonis. I mean, I'm sure there's like a million other tips I could give you and things that helped me, but like it was so long ago now. It was, I mean, I stopped pumping literally two years ago. How old is it? Or two and a half. So two years ago is when I stopped pumping. Oh my gosh, get a freaking haka. Get a freaking haka because I got a bunch of, um, what do you call it? Little, um, like the mastitis, like horrible, like your milk duct gets clogged and like causes an infection. Oh my God, it's so painful. Oh my God, it's so painful. Oh, I hope you don't get that. I hope that doesn't happen to you. So some women, their milk ducts, like sometimes can get a little clogged. And um, when that happens, if it doesn't get like fixed, like it can cause, you have to get antibiotics and it's like, it was so painful. Anyway, but the haka was the only thing I could use to get relief. I'd fill the haka up with water and I think like Epsom salts or something like that. I can't remember. So don't listen to me. I'm not a doctor. Google it. But um, the Haka is this little device that like, it's just like, it's not hooked up to anything. It's just like a little thing and it's like suctions to your boob, but like it would suction out the like the clogged duct or duct or whatever. And that like, I needed to do that like so many times because I kept getting clogged ducts. And so yeah, have a Haka on hand and look up all the things that you need in order to like clear a clogged milk duct because that happens and I, it is very painful. Anyway, I have been talking for way too long, so I'm going to go, but thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you guys soon. Um, tomorrow I we're posting the podcast. So make sure to go be subscribed to the podcast channel and listen to the podcast. I definitely didn't organize my rocks at all. I just talked this whole time. I'm going to go. I'll see you guys later. Bye.